Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online series 12 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In the previous episode, I try out a really fun team that is super strong in best of one, featuring sets like Choice Scarf Kyogre, Focus Sash, Max Speed Calyrex Ice Rider, Life Orb Regieleki, Dynamax Porygon 2, and a couple of more. So details for the team are in the description below if you want to try it out yourselves, and I've also linked the last episode if you have not caught that yet. So yeah, thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, please share your support by leaving a like in the video, I'd really appreciate it. And before we get into today's episode, question of the day, just kind of a fun one, but I'm curious, if you could buff a type, what type would it be, and how would you buff it? For me, I think Bug is just such a sad, both offensive and defensive typing, and so I don't know what the exact fix here would be. I think it would be interesting to give it maybe a couple more immunities at least, just because right now, as where it stands, it's just so weak to so many things. Or maybe give some more like signature bug type attacks that could provide a lot more value, but that's one of my answers. So let me know yours in the comment section below, and let's get started. Wow. First game here, and there's a Corviknight, Kiram White, Tapu Koko, Groudon, Whimsicott, and Incineroar. Really cool stuff. I have not seen Corviknight since like the early days of Sword and Shield. And Kiram Groudon is a pretty interesting restricted duo as well. So, Calyrex is okay with Glacial Lances across the board. They have Tailwind support from Whimsicott, so I have to assume I'm probably just going to get outsped throughout this game. Porygon 2 as a Dynamax option is pretty compelling. Corviknight's kind of scary here. Uh, if I were my opponent, what would I go with? I think, like, Whimsicott, Kiram, Groudon for sure, and then Aleki, or sorry, um, Tapu Koko is the fourth makes sense. Instant's not that good because of the Kyogre and the Psychic Terrain. So it's between Corviknight and Koko, I think, from their end. Uh, the most threatening lead, I mean, like, Coco Groudon, Coco Kiram, Whimsicott Groudon, Whimsicott Kiram, those are all pretty scary. So I think with this one, I'm just going to lead into D Porygon with Calyrex and Kyogre in the back. Because the idea is I am going to have a tough time dealing with my opponent outspeeding me. So I'd rather just play towards the bulk that I have with Porygon and Indy in the early game. And then I could go for things like Helping Hand plus Max Strike, for example, or Helping Hand plus uh, Hailstorm. So yeah, let's see. Okay, they're gonna go with Groudon and Whimsicott. Groudon and Whimsicott is interesting because I can actually just go for Icy Wind. That'll drop Groudon's speed and then I can just bring in Scarf Ogre and potentially outspeed you. The alternative is to just max turn one and just end up targeting Groudon anyway. Um, I think the problem here is them just going for max Quakes with Groudon, boosting their special defense, right? Honestly, turn one, I'm down for just an expanding force and an icy wind. I, I think, like, I normally want to max Porygon here, but the problem is them maxing Groudon. If you max the Groudon... Okay, they actually just go for Precipice Blades, though, and they actually miss Porygon, unfortunately. Also, you'll notice Whimsicott there did not go for... <laughs> They're going for Trick Room, uh, expecting Trick Room from my end, but I don't have it. I'm going to miss the Whimsicott here, though, okay, so this is all around the board. Um, this is not how I expected the game to start, and this is one of the downsides of using Trick Room on Whimsicott, when you're like, you use it when you're so sure your opponent is going to have it, but we don't even have it on this team. Okay, so with that speed drop, does Groudon outspeed me under Trick Room now? Just want to double check, like, assuming they're min speed. If you're min speed, yeah, but otherwise, if you're normal speed, you should still be faster than me here. Or I, I should outspeed you, sorry. That's what I meant to say. Um, with Porygon, I do. With Indy, really depends. Okay, now, though, I think maxing the Porygon's actually okay. I don't know if I need to do it this turn, though, right? Mm. I'm actually going to go for it. The reason I'm maxing now is... Okay, they switch Whimsicott out. Into Corviknight, that's fine. Yeah, so they did, end up bring, they did not end up bringing Coco. Instead, they brought Corviknight. That makes sense, although we have Kyogre with Thunder in the back as well as Helping Hand support. The only downside is I can't really drop the Corviknight stats here. I, I just wasn't confident in a Helping Hand Shadow Ball. 
or helping hand icy beam icy beam icy wind actually getting the knockout on a ground on there so i was like yeah if i'm not getting the ko i'd rather um i'd rather just ensure i do get the knockout here i wonder if icy wind would have knocked out the whimsicott probably not but yeah i don't know i mean whimsicots don't carry bulk too frequently but this is also just icy wind from porygon that we're talking about and since they're moving afterwards with trick room analytic doesn't even give us the boost there right okay hail chip on corviknight's actually pretty nice here let's see if they have leftovers okay they do have speed my indie under trick room and they are indeed leftovers that's fine i wonder if corviknight maxes but like i just don't think it's that much of a threat yeah it's defensive but your damage pressure isn't amazing okay they bring out kirim that's fine um, Kiram, Kiram, Kiram. Like an helping hand here. Kiram's probably gonna max. Uh, Phantasm would drop their defense. I'm down for strike for now. I don't think I need a defense drop quite yet. Corviknight normally is a Pokemon that can go for like Iron Defense, Body Press, Roost. They actually switch out though. Okay, so maybe expecting me to target that slot, which makes sense. But, um, oh, interesting. Kiram doesn't max here. I think that's kind of risky for them to go for, especially if you're not protecting here. Because now it's like, even if we don't get the KO here, you are really out of good Dynamax options, right? Okay, Kiram takes that pretty well, but all things considered, I can't complain. Up their speed and they're gonna go for blizzard cool okay so this gives me a free switch in now into my calyrex ice rider which is great because i can just click glacial lance with that and kirim's really your best option of maxing at this point but it's pretty awkward right because you're essentially one attack away from getting knocked out the speed dynamic here is interesting Okay, but I think I will just Glacial Lance and Phantasm here. Phantasm to drop Kiram's defense so that Glacial Lance can finish it off. So at this point, your max options are either, you know, 30, 35% Whimsicott or Kiram or Corviknight. Corviknight as a max option normally sounds scary, but with Scarf Kyogre in the back as well as Focus Ash on my Calyrex, I feel pretty good about going up against it, especially because we'll have basically picked up enough KOs uh, leading up to it, right? So here, if you're my opponent, you could just go for a double protect right now. And yeah, Trick Room Whimsicott is a nice tech, especially if you're using a team that is, you know, pretty Trick Room weak. But in this case, my opponent ends up getting punished for it because they, you know, read into my Porygon going for Trick Room. We don't even even have it, uh, which is one of the fun things about this Porygon, right? Uh, players will often go for attacks like Fake Out or Taunt or, you know, self uh, reversing your Trick Room. Um, and none of those are really that effective against this Porygon since it likes to Dynamax so frequently. Okay, so Kirim's gonna max here. Whimsicott protects, that's fine. Now, this guarantees that Kirim's going down unless they're max guarding, and they do go for Warm Wind. Okay, fine by me. On to Calyrex. And this is the funny thing about that speed drop, right? Like, I actually outspeed the Kirim now. So, the Kirim's... Probably not max speed, but uh, Phantasm into Glacial Lance here should definitely be a knockout. Okay, I said definitely. I'm actually not 100% sure on that because it took that... Is it a Sylvested? I don't know. Either way, though, we'll get Glacial Lance off. Let's see if it picks up the KO. Okay, it does. Like, I figured it would, but yeah, I was, the Kyurem just took the Phantasm so well that I wasn't 100% sure. Plus, they had the uh, attack drop via Max Wind, obviously. Okay, that's going to give us an attack boost. Porygon takes Hail. Whimsicott takes Hail. And I've still got Kyogre waiting in the back, so yeah. I mean, the main advantage in this game was my opponent just taking so much damage with Groudon and not really getting too much off with it. We obviously got pretty lucky dodging a Precipice Blades as well, so that made things easier for me. I think even without the dodge, we would have been in pretty good shape, though, because Porygon never really was at risk of taking too much damage in this game. So it's the last turn of Trick Room. Whimsicott just protected, so can't really protect again here. Um, I don't mind giving up Calyrex if I get a KO onto Whimsicott. Like, here, I'm honestly down to just Glacial Lands and just Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball, because I don't want to miss with the Porygon right now. 
Corviknight will likely outspeed the Calyrex under Trick Room. Well, not likely, really just should. Be really surprised if it did. Like the, the only reason it would is if it were like Choice Scarf, right? Um, so Whimsicott goes for the double, which I think is smart. That's really the only play you can go for and don't get it. So Kyogre should win the game now. Yeah, so there's Brave Bird from Corviknight. I think you're trying Cal Calyrex here. Yep. And now this just grants me the free switch into Scarf Kyogre. So this was an interesting one because it's not like Dynamax Porygon 2 just outright won the game, right? It's not like it was able to do so much damage where it could pick up these KOs before my opponent could move. But ultimately, it was a nice max option because, one, my opponent didn't have super good, super effective damage into it. And two, like, our early game just ended up being really strong, right? Turn 1 alone was such a huge swing for me that it would have been pretty difficult for my opponent to actually come back from that position. So now we get Trace Scarf Kyogre out. Changes the weather, although I'd actually prefer the hail here to reduce their leftovers recovery. And here... I wonder if Water Spot single target actually gets the knockout. I'm actually fine going for Water Spot in this position um, in Shadow Ball. Th Thunder also works. I, I think I'm just curious about the Water Spot Calc here because I don't think I've ever played Kyogre versus Corviknight just because, you know, when Corviknight was really relevant in Sword and Shield, it was when Kyogre did not exist in the format. Okay, yeah, that is enough for a one-hit KO. Well, that's good to know. So, you know, sometimes, like, you can learn random calcs by, in games like this, right? Where it's like, well, I, no I normally don't see this Pokemon. That's normally not a calc I'm going to go out of my way to learn. But uh, getting, like, eh, actual experience during a game is always valuable, right? And so, like, that's one helpful way to learn some damage calcs is just by experiencing it um, in the game. And then you can run it afterwards as well. But, uh, yeah, really interesting team there. But unfortunately for Corviknight, I wasn't really able to accomplish too much. Corviknight in itself is actually a pretty good answer in a Porygon 2 because it's pretty bulky and can Iron Defense and Body Press, but it just takes a little too long to set up and it never had like a safe opportunity in this game, I feel like. Other than maybe when my opponent switched Corviknight out into Whimsicott, that was like the one turn where it was maybe relatively safe, but my opponent didn't know the Porygon 2 moveset fully, so the switch makes sense, especially if you're trying to cover for something like a Max Lightning. So, yeah. Either way though, let's keep things going. All right, our next game here, and it's Colossal, but wow, Eternatus, Evoltal, Rillaboom, Celesteela, Blastoise. Huh, this is really interesting. Evoltal is kind of a nightmare. We can use Aleki to kind of bypass that, though. Mm, I don't like Porygon here because it can get Snarled, and it's just a pretty bad max option after that. So I'm actually thinking like Aleki NDD lead uh, with Calyrex and Kyogre in the back. So the idea here is Aleki is pretty good as a max option into Evil Tall Cell Steel of Blastoise, right? They've got three electric weeks right there. Colossal doesn't really take max lightning super well, and you're not really going to be able to get the policy off with Colossal if you're because like the only real setup they have to activate policy and steam engine is Blastoise plus Coal. I guess Blastoise could have like a spread water type attack or like a surf or something rather than Aqua Jet. Aqua Jet's normally what I expect, um, right, in order to enable the policy. Some really cool teams today, though. Love to see it. Rillaboom and Eternatus. Okay, not an ideal lead matchup, that's for sure, but we can get around it. Mainly curious who wins the terrain war here. Okay, good, we win. That's, that's actually a really big deal here. Um, turn one in itself is really interesting. Real Boom Eternatus. I think you have Evil Tall in the back. That means you have Triple Ice Week, though, which is obviously good for me, not great for them. Also, expanding force here is not bad damage. Mm, I don't have Volt Switch here, though. I'm honestly not opposed to an expanding force and an electro web here. Like, I was thinking about switching Aleki out, but I don't want to bring in the... Whoa. Now that's interesting. They're maxing Rillaboom. I wonder if they're not Gigantamax. Never mind. <laughs> they are. Um, if you weren't Gigantamax, like, it's interesting because you can change the terrain, right? I'm actually very happy to see that max, although Eternatus protecting here would make a lot of sense. Yeah, good play. 
That is a very nice play. I don't really have too many ways around this. Um, but the thing is, now I can just bring in Calyrex Ice Rider and just like helping hand Glacial Lands, especially with the speed drop on Rillaboom. Now I'll definitely outspeed you. Okay. The question is, who do I want to Dynamax in this game? It looks like AV Rillaboom to me. Yeah, and they max Quake. It's a nice play. It's a very nice play. Did not expect Rillaboom to max, but the thing is, like I said, now I can just bring out the Calyrex Ice Rider. Good Protect on Eternatus as well to just cover for any Psychic type attacks from my end. So we're out Calyrex, and like I kind of want to just go for a Helping Hand in Glacial Lands, but the alternative is to just go for a Follow Me to protect Calyrex a little bit better, right? I think Follow Me might be safer here. It's just tempting to pick up a double knockout in front of me, but then I would get it, give my opponent two free switch ins, one probably being Evil Tall. Okay, yeah. I'll just go for Follow Me here then. Play it safe in Glacial Lands. They don't have too many switch ins in Glacial Lands here. That's that's the other thing though, right? They could switch Eternatus out, and if they do that, then Hoping Hand would have just picked up a knockout onto their max and give me so much free momentum, right? But if we knock out Rillaboom, mm, that also paves the way for Kyogre, but they're not switching. Okay. Yep, just Dynamax Cannon. That's fine by me, especially with the special defense boost. Really shouldn't take too much. Rillaboom should finish us off, though, but uh, if I KO the Eternatus on the way out, that's really not much at all. Okay, perfect. The main idea here is because I, I kind of want to Dynamax Calyrex, but if I don't go for a follow me there, Calyrex takes a fair amount of damage, and it breaks its Focus Sash. So I'd ideally like to conserve both, right? You're just going to Drum Solo me. Perfect. Okay. So even though I'm down a Pokemon, like, I've gotten rid of one of my opponent's Restricted. They've already committed two turns of Dynamax, right? And I still have a Dynam I still have a free Dynamax, and my Calyrex is at plus one attack. Now... Evil Toll coming in here is a little bit scary because you can foul play, but if Evil Toll comes out, oh, it's Colossal. Interesting. Okay. So with Colossal coming in here, it's obviously really free to just Water Spell and Glacial Lands, right? That's the most obvious play for me to make right now. The question is, do I want to predict my opponent? Because I think here, Rillaboom switching out into your final Pokemon, i.e. Blastoise, makes a lot of sense. And I've got Seed Bomb, so I don't think I necessarily need to go for a Glacial Lance, because I would like to KO... Unless Seed Bomb and Water Spot actually, like, fails to pick up the KO on Rillaboom, but I'm fairly confident it will. So this covers for any switch in, but they just end up forfeiting. Okay. I feel like um, the thing about my opponent's team is, like, post-Dynamax, you don't have that many great options, because, like, Colossal wants the max. I guess Soul Steel could be Leech Seed, right? Just, like, the bulky set that doesn't need a Dynamax. But, like, Colossal's, you know, a Pokemon that really appreciates maxing. Blastoise is good support, so you don't necessarily need to max it, but it does get a lot of value out of maxing. Eternatus obviously cannot max at all for them. And, you know, it, so in that position, like, yeah, I wonder if... I, I was trying to cover for Blastoise switching, because the one way I could see my opponent maybe pulling something off is, like, you uh, switch out Rillaboom, bring in the Blastoise, and then get a free Aqua Jet or Fake Out off the next turn. Uh, of course, they could have switched Rillaboom out into Evil Tall in that position, but then I just get a Scarf Water Spout and a, like a little bit of chip damage from Seed Bomb, and then another Water Spout should just finish you off. So, yeah, the Seed Bomb there is just a cover for any uh, switch in that they could potentially have. But the main thing is that my opponent committed to Max early. That Max I think was to try to maybe cover for Regieleki maxing, which I was thinking about slightly. But even if Regieleki max, we just don't do enough damage unless I'm going for like Helping Hand Max Strike into Eternatus, which is something I'd actually considered, especially because I didn't really consider my opponent countering that play with Gigantamax Rillaboom. But this was just a classic example of my opponent like not getting too much out of their max early on, um, and then us just having a lot of late game uh, damage, especially between Calyrex and Kyogre. So yeah, let's keep things going. Third match here, and talk about the teams today. Evil Tall plus... Necrozma, Dusk Main, Groudon, Kiram White in that first one, and then Evil Tall plus Eternatus. So, very interesting restricted course today. Um, hmm. I think like the, the main thing to watch out for is weakness policy on Necrozma, right? You can activate it via Sucker Punch from Grim. Grim, 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 Grim. 
think Black Glass's Urshifu here actually has a lot of value. Hmm. I don't like Porygon 2 at all here because it just, even as a Dynamax Pokemon, doesn't really do enough damage. So I think we eliminate that. Uh, Entity would mainly be for Helping Hand. That's basically it, but I don't love it either. So then I'm thinking Aleki, Urshifu, Calyrex, Kyogre, right? I'm kind of intrigued by Aleki lead with Calyrex. Kyogre and Urshifu in the back. Mm, getting a lot of value out of Kyogre in this game is going to be kind of tricky, though, because they've got Gastrodon, they've got potential screens from Grim Snarl, Evil Token Snarl me. Um, if I were my opponent, I'd probably go Grim, Gastro, Evil Token, and Charisma. Not necessarily in that order, but those are the four Pokemon I would bring. So even, like... Assuming we know that and those are the four that they bring doesn't really make things that much easier, but Aleki can at least apply max lightning pressure early on. There's Necrozma and Grim. Yep. Huh. What do I want to do on turn one? I think. The only tricky thing is if I lose a Lecky, that's my best max option into Evil Taught of the way. Maybe leading Urshifu was actually appropriate here, but... Like, I kind of want to just Rising Voltage and Glacial Lands turn one and just get rid of the Grim Snarl. Because I don't want to Dynamax. I don't think I really get that much value out of maxing here. Because uh, it's like not... You know, Max Lightning isn't a guaranteed KO onto either, especially if they set up Light Screen, then it's definitely not going to be able to knock out either even without a Dynamax. And then Necrozma can, of course, just Max and, like, Max Quake or Steel Spike. And then Grimmsnarl can Sucker Punch to activate a policy on it as well. So there's just a lot to worry about with this lead. And Urshifu specifically would have been really nice into this duo. The thing about Urshifu, though, is that it doesn't have a Focus Sash, and so then I also have to worry about just getting carried by Spirit Break. So that's actually kind of the, one of the reasons why I'm aggressively targeting the... Grimmsnarl down first, because then it paves the way for Black Glasses or Shifu. Now, my other question is, how fast is the Evil Tall, right? Are you max speed, or can or Shifu actually outspeed you? Oh, they go for Fake Out. Interesting. Okay. So it's that kind of Grimmsnarl. And Max Quake. Okay. I like that play. Because it's like, you know, normally you want to want to fake out something if you think it's going to Dynamax, but in this position, if I Dynamax with it, then you just KO my Max Mon with Max Quick. So, I think that's smart. Okay. Um, they're going to have Thunder Wave for sure. I'm also nervous about them being max speed Grim. Uh, normally with Fake Out, it's like you see it decently common on like Focus Ash variants with speed investment. I wonder if Helping Hand Black Glass's Wicked Blow KOs Necrozma. Ugh, I'm not confident on that. I could also consider maxing here, but... Because the problem is they're going to have Evil Tall in the back. I just don't have a super good max option here. I, I wouldn't count on a KOA Necrozma as the problem. Okay, I'm just going to Glacial Lance and Wicked Blow here then. What would be ideal? They like go for self sucker punch. Because that doesn't really actually help them accomplish too much. Okay, they're just attacking with both. Yeah, we would not have picked up the KO with Helping Hand there. There's policy. Grim is attacking here, so let's see if it is faster than Calyrex. It's not. Okay, that's huge, actually. That's a really big deal. Does Grim? I thought Grim's base speed was slightly higher than Calyrex, which is why I was thinking if they were max speed, they could outspeed me, but I actually could be wrong on that. 
Just because both of these Pokemon are normally so slow and bulky, I don't think about the speed or interaction between them that frequently. Man, this actually could potentially be a max uh, Urshifu game. They bring in Ensign. Ooh, interesting. Mm, this turn... I mean, Ensign could obviously go for Fake Out on a Calyrex. My question here is whether or not Helping Hand Max Darkness gets the KO onto Necrozma at minus one with them being a plus one defense. I honestly think the answer is no. <laughs> Which is not great. I guess I could just protect here though, right? And then just get a free switch into a Kyogre. That feels most appropriate to me. And then we can potentially max Kyogre or Urshifu against the evil tall that they have in the back. Yeah, uh, the only way this doesn't work is if Insin parting shots in a Calyrex. Rather than clicking fake out onto either. That'd be a very nice play by them. They didn't click fake out. Okay, well done. Quake goes into Urshifu. Okay, that's fine. Did they parting shot in a Calyrex? Because if so, that's a very, very nice play. They parting shot it, but they actually targeted Urshifu. Okay. I think that should put me in a pretty good spot now. Um... Wicked Blow is a guaranteed knockout onto Necrozma, so I'm fine taking that. And I'm fine just going for high horsepower here, because I don't want to bring in Kyogre just for it to get hit by a fake out right now. I think the main advantage today is that I've been able to save these Dynamaxes, and that's obviously been really valuable. The only awkward thing is, like, I don't really love maxing any of the Pokemon I have right now, but the, the upside is that I have the option of maxing all three still. We could just end the game with Max uh, Calyrex Ice Rider, potentially, right? Against Evil Tall. But I do have to worry about foul play. Especially from, like, Life Orb Evil Tall. But the nice thing about having Urshifu here is that there's, like, no safe answer for the Necrozma. They actually hard switch Ensign in, into. Ooh, they didn't even bring Evil Tall. Wow, okay. Well, this is where us having Seed Bomb from Calyrex Ice Rider is going to be very good for me. Because what I can do now is just switch Calyrex out into Kyogre. Get a free high horsepower off here, which is nice. Okay, sweet. And it's leftovers. Yeah, so like, at this point, I have a definitive win condition with the Calyrex against the Gastrodon. So here it's pretty safe to just protect Urshifu. Uh, the only way things can go south at this point is if Incineroar is... Um, can, like, somehow survive a water spout. But, like, what I can do here... Or, sorry, if they have Protect is actually the main thing. But what I can do here is Protect, switch out into Kyogre, then just Wicked Blow, Water Spout, KO, Ensign. I don't really care about giving Gastronaut a Storm Drain boost because Calyrex is faster and can just Seed Bomb it for a KO. Okay. So the only way this doesn't... The Wicked Blow, Water Spout play next turn doesn't work is if Ensign has Protect. So I could think about playing around Protect here right now. That's also a possibility. And they go for Yawn, but they targeted the Urshifu slot. Cool. Yeah, uh, the decision to not bring Evil Tall here is interesting to me. I feel like, what, because we, we saw Evil Tall in Team Preview in both this game and the last one, but neither games... Like, this one my opponent just didn't bring it. The last one we, we never actually got to find out. Uh, Wicked Blow here onto Insin just... Uh, it actually might be more consistent to just double up on Gastrodon here, now that I think about it. Because, like, Urshifu's never going to KO me, right? And if... Sorry, Instant's never going to KO me. And if Vincent actually had um, Protect here, things actually get kind of dicey for me. And since I'd still have the Dynamax option, like, even though most Instants don't carry Protect, um, Wicked Blow plus Ice Beam is very powerful in a Gastrodon, right? It might just pick up the Knockout, and even if it doesn't, like, I'm still in a pretty good spot. Freeze happens here, but I think Wicked Blow should finish it off anyway, especially with Black Glasses. Yeah, so like, 
In, in this position, the main thing is knowing that the Instant can't really do anything damage-wise either of my Pokemon. The, the best you can go for is like a Flare Blitz Burn maybe onto Urshifu, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, and they just parting shot into Kyogre. So I didn't want to like give my opponent the chance to come back by them actually having Protect on Instant. I get nothing off for the turn other than a Wicked Blow, which doesn't do that much damage to it. And then, um, yeah. Actually, I should just max here. We could blow, max, and then just max Geyser. Yeah, so, so the main thing there is I didn't want to give Gastron comeback potential because let's say Instant actually has Protect. You Protect there. I give Gastron a Storm Drain boost. I don't get any damage off other than a little bit of chip on Instant. You Earth Power to KO my Urshifu. I guess then I just bring out Calyrex and I just go for Seed Bomb anyway, so we're probably still fine. Yeah, I, I think this is one of those end games where actually we could have played it out multiple different ways and the play I'm talking about, like, in my head it was maybe not as optimal, but I actually think it still leads to 100% victory anyway because we have Seed Bomb on um, the Calyrex. And so, yeah, this is a game in which we didn't really need our Dynamax here. We actually could have won without it, but might as well just accelerate the game, you know, a little bit faster if I wanted to <laughs> save my Dynamax, of course. Then can switch out into Calyrex and then bring it Ky Kyogre back in. But yeah, the decision to not bring Evil Tail here is interesting because I was actually thinking that was one of my main threats. But uh, the Black Glasses or Shifu here very, very nice specifically to deal with Necrozma, which is not exactly a very common restricted Pokemon that you see in the format. So yeah, we definitely played some interesting restricted cores today. Those were all ones that I've really never run into at all. Um, and so it is fun to see as Series 12 develops players, you know, not just using uh, Zashi and Plus x y and z um and exploring all these you know new duos so yeah some really fun games here like i mentioned the team that we're trying out here is i think especially good for best of one and so if you're looking for a team that's just consistent has a lot of good damage across the board has a lot of fun max options uh this one is certainly it so thanks so much as always for watching leave a like if you enjoy don't forget to answer the question of the day and i'll see you all soon all right peace